Good evening. We welcome all parishioners to St. John the Baptist Cathedral Basilica Parish as your place of worship, of faith formation, and of outreach. We welcome all visitors. We depend upon your weekly offerings and donations to keep the parish operating, so there are collection boxes provided for you at the entrances and exits of the church. We also have tap machines available at each entrance so that you can use your debit and credit cards to donate. You can use your parish envelopes or donate online at the parish website. Thank you for your continuing support. I'd ask you now if you could please silence your phones. Thank you. Our presider this evening is Father Cecil Critch. Our processional hymn is found in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 531, For the Beauty of the Earth. Please stand. <coughs> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, as we give thanks to God for all the gifts that he has given us, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts today, and we ask the Lord's forgiveness for the times we have been not so grateful for what we have. We ask the Lord's forgiveness for that times of ingratitude. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison. God of mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. 
we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. are from Thanksgiving Monday. Let us pray. God, whose gifts are countless and whose goodness is without limit, teach us, we pray, to use wisely the rich blessings of land and sea, to be attentive to the needs of others, and to give us freely as we have received, that we may, in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judea judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it. When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you that I will do, what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judea are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalms can be found in the pamphlets in your pew. This evening's psalm, Psalm 80, the vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Yeah. 
brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. It sent out its branches to the sea and its shoots to the river. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Why then have you broken down its walls so that all who pass along the way pluck its fruit? The boar from the forest ravages it, and all that move in the field feed on it. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Turn again, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine, the stock that your right hand planted. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of A reading from Philippians. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, don't worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, brothers and sisters, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, and whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Matthew. 
Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his servants, beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other servants and stoned uh, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. And when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? And they said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. And Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. The parable in today's gospel speaks about the entire really biblical story of salvation. The vineyard stands for the people of Israel as today's first reading points out. The vineyard owner stands for God. The tenant farmer stand for the religious authorities, the scribes and Pharisees, who Jesus was talking and telling this parable to, and whom God had put in charge of the people and their laws. The servants in the first group whom the owner sends to the tenant farmers to get his share of the grapes are the early prophets whom God sent to Israel to ask them to change their ways, to repent. The servants in the second group are the later prophets, so we have one group, two different groups of prophets from the Old Testament. The owner's son, of course, who is killed by the tenant farmers, refers to Jesus. They will respect my son, he says. The new tenant farmers to whom the owner leases his vineyard are the 12 apostles of Jesus, representing the new Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel, representing them. They replaced the chief priests and Pharisees who rejected Jesus as the new leader, and they are the new leaders of God's people. So finally, the first leasing, they talk about two leasings. The first leasing of the vineyard refers to the old covenant, and the second leasing of the vineyard refers to Jesus and the new covenant. And so the parable is a beautiful summary of the entire biblical story of salvation. In a key part of today's gospel reading, though, Jesus speaks about the stone that was rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone of a different building. Jesus is speaking of himself here. He was the stone rejected by the builders, but put to death on the cross. Yet God raised raised him from the dead, and he became the cornerstone of a new spiritual building, what we call the church built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure joins together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord. Even though the rejection of Jesus, his crucifixion was a tragedy, something wonderful has come from it. God has brought some good out of the brutal rejection of God's Son by humanity. God did not give up on us on Calvary. God ensured that the rejected stone became the cornerstone of a new community of believers from every nation. God remains faithful to us even in the face of the rejection of his beloved son. Now, the vineyard is entrusted to us, the church, the people of God. We are the caretakers of the vineyard now. How are we looking after our part of God's vineyard? When harvest time comes, we are expected to produce fruits of right living, sharing, caring, and showing forth the love and mercy of the gospel in our daily lives. They are fruits. These par- this parable challenges us to keep working in God's service and not to become complacent and fail to appreciate and thank God, especially on this weekend, this Thanksgiving weekend, for the beauty of our lives, the joy of our families, and God's loving care for each of us. A time will come when we will be answerable for the way we have carried out the task that God has given to us in baptism to do. In a secular world dominated by consumerism and materialism with emphasis on accumulation of material things and certainly not spiritual realities, 
we often find ourselves in our own pursuit of what will make us happy, following the values of our culture around us that often neglect the spiritual, we go to great lengths to exercise our body, we educate our mind, but we often sometimes neglect our spiritual selves, which are our centers that hold everything together. God tells us in the readings today that in order for us to become the very best people we can be, we are challenged to keep Christ as the cornerstone and center of our lives, our families, our communities, and our world. We must give our minds and hearts to being Christ's body for others today by spreading his love, showing his mercy and compassion, promoting his justice and peace, displaying his mercy and forgiveness, and working for reconciliation and peace in our families, communities, and our world. Let us stand as we profess our faith and we pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We turn now in great trust in our Heavenly Father to hear and answer all the prayers in our hearts today. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and our Archbishop Peter, that they may continue through the power and guidance of the Holy Spirit to lead and guide our church in these challenging times. We praise, pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our St. John the Baptist Basilica Parish, we pray that we may continue to build and welcome a community of faith and outreach. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Spirit's guidance and wisdom as the Synod of Bishops continues in Rome, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and the religious life, we pray to the Lord. We Lord, pray for our, our seminarian, uh, Chris Quigley. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. <laughs> for peace in our world, especially in Israel, Sudan, and Ukraine, and we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that we may protect all human life from conception to natural death, and we pray for an end to abortion and a euthanasia. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in thanksgiving to God for the gift of creation, that all people will no longer see the earth as an object to be exploited, but one to be cherished as a sacred gift from our Creator. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, that the healing power of the Holy Spirit may bring them comfort and strength. We pray especially for Frank O'Leary, Jr., Debbie Lucas. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the souls of the faithfully departed, for Karen Tracy, Jordan Nadier, Rose Lafier, Donna Hickey, Renshaw, Olivia Roberts, and Mary Wall that they may rest in the merciful arms of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the prayers in the quiet of our hearts today, our own intentions at this Mass. We pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the graces and blessings you give us every day. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Our offertory hymn can be found in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 532, For the Fruit of All Creation.
nation. Thanks be to God for the plowing, sowing, reaping, silent growth while we are sleeping. Future needs in earth safe keeping. Thanks be to God. In the true reward of labor, God's will be done. In the help we give our neighbor, God's will is done. In task of caring for the hungry and despairing in the harvest we are sharing God's will is done <clears throat> Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good of all his holy church. <clears throat> Let us pray. From, our, from your many gifts, O God, your thankful people offers you bread and wine, praying that by the grace of this sacrifice, we may treasure all that you give, share your gifts with others, and use them for your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through your word and your spirit you called all things into being, that your love might be reflected in the vastness of the universe, in the bounty of land and sea, and in the diversity of people who bear your image. Yet your gifts of nature did not exhaust your goodness, for the fullness of your love was only revealed when you sent your only begotten Son for our salvation and poured out your spirit to gather us into one as your own. Therefore, with the great company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth all full of your glory, Hosanna in the heart. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate.
celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember your servant, Kiran, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and especially all first responders and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John the Baptist and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs with them to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming again of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we share that peace of Christ now with one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. God, behold him, takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only, but say, only the say the word, word and my soul, soul shall be healed. For the reception of Holy Communion, we ask that people from the side sections come to receive Holy Communion first, and we encourage you to sanitize your hands before receiving Holy Communion. If you are unable to receive Holy Communion, you are welcome to come forward for a blessing. Our Communion Hymn can be found in Celebrate in Song, number 6.4, Let Us Be Bread. Let us be 
bread blessed by the Lord, broken and shed, life for the world. Let us be wine, love freely poured. Let us be one.
my friends, if you keep my commands, no longer servants but friends. Let us be bread blessed by the Lord, broken and shed life for the world. Let us be wine, love freely poured. Let us be one in the Lord. See how my people have nothing to eat. Give them the bread that is you. Let us be I just call on Laura, one of our uh, youth leaders here, to come forward to present on um, a program for adult faith development uh, starting in the next couple of weeks. Thank you, Father, and good evening, everyone. So as Father said, my name is Laura Goff, and I'm a member of the Basilica Mission team here. I'm excited to tell you that once again this fall, we'll be offering the program The Search. Uh, it will start October 17th, which is a Tuesday, and it will run for seven weeks. We'll skip Halloween, which is October 31st, um, and, uh, and it runs from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, the search is, um, we're offering this to anyone who hasn't taken Alpha or the search. It, the search really replaces Alpha. So each night begins with a delicious meal, followed by a video, and then small group discussions. So each week we'll tackle um, the key questions of every human heart and examine our place in the larger story of existence. It's a great program for anyone to meet other parishioners and talk about your faith in a really warm, welcoming, and non-judgmental setting. So it's designed also for adults, so, um, you know, as opposed to youth or children. Everyone's invited to attend, and it's free, but registration is required um, in advance. You can find information about that in today's bulletin, so please take a copy with you. You can register on our parish website. Um, if you have any questions, I'll stay around after Mass. Feel free to, um, to approach me and ask any questions. We've included a phone number um, on, on the bulletin today, so if you'd like to ask any questions or have a conversation about it, feel free to give us a call. Um, so if you've ever wondered about the meaning of life or you want to deepen your relationship with Jesus or your faith needs an energy boost, this program is for you. But it's also open to people who may have strayed away from the church or, or even non-Catholics who are curious about the Catholic Church. So please feel free to spread the word. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Father. And uh, we hope to see you at the search. Thank you, Laura, and thank your team. 
Let us stand now and pray. Grant us, almighty God, that in this Eucharist, as you show us the gracious depths of your love, grant that we may share with others all that we hold in trust from you and live as a people in true gratitude of heart through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. God bless. Our missioning hymn can be found in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 535, Now Thank We All Our God. Shout.